Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome to Hump Day and a Better Connecticut. I'm Kara Sundlin. And I'm Melissa Cole, filling in for Scott today as he enjoys a little vacation time. Yes, he's headed off to someplace warm after we had another round of uh, morning delays and yes. snow in some places. It's so funny because, you know, there's nothing in Hartford, but you just go up a little bit into the Northwest Hills and many folks woke up to one to two inches of fresh snow this morning and probably another one to two or even three inches additional today from some persistent snow band activity there so uh, if you want to see the white stuff just head up route 44 uh, yeah it's just <laughs> a completely different world up there but you know it, it, nothing is as bad as what they've been having in the center of the country so this is some drone video over Kalamazoo Michigan which wow. is only about an hour and a half uh, east of Chicago so they get all that lake effect snow yep and look at it all oh my goodness yes all I know it's covered. been causing a lot of travel troubles in the middle part of the country um, and I think there's also some pretty interesting video of some snow slamming down on a windshield. All right, Dri okay. they're driving right now. That's probably I-94. That's my guess. Look at the truck, yeah. Okay, there it goes. Uh-oh, oh, oh no. Yes. It broke the windshield. Could have been a lot worse, but still, that is not something that, that you scary. want to have happen when you're driving down the oh highway, that's for gracious. sure. That is scary, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so roll doll books. Uh, you know, you're reading them with the kids. We all love growing up with them. And now it's a big deal if you've seen it on social media. Netflix is now going to animate many of them. So great because they are classics. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, um, BFG. So they're going to make them into cartoons. And the goal is for kids all around the world to get to enjoy some of the magic of his works. He is so good. And you know, even though, which is great because when they're getting to that age where they need to read longer chapter books, his are still hits because they're so yes. interesting and the kids still love to read them. So that's wonderful. Love it. All right, so do you want to know the baby names? What do you name, are any of you pregnant out there? What are you naming your babies? We've got the top 100 names of 2018. This might surprise you. It's always a little different by geography too, but around the country, Jackson is number one for boys. Okay. And Sophia tops the girls list for the ninth year and they say it's not slowing down. Sophia is a big name. Well, I know a lot of Sophias. Yeah, so here's the top list. Okay, so the top three, Sophia number one, Olivia number two, Emma number three. Okay, I don't see Char Charlotte or Helena on that list. No, <laughs> last time I checked, Helena was like down in the 400s. Not popular, okay. Okay, and for boys, let's see, we've got Jackson number one, Liam number two, and Noah number three. And then Aiden, and again, Caden, Grayson, yeah, who knows? Okay, right, so, so if you want to name your baby after food, as some millennials <laughs> are doing, um, the top one is Kale. Kale, <laughs> Kiwi, Maple, Clementine, Saffron, Rosemary, I could say. I'm Actually, saying. And Clementine is a cute name, too. I, I know a couple Clementines. But really? I, I think like Kale and Kiwi, Maple. I guess Maple is sort of like Maple. Mabel. Sage, I've seen. <laughs> I mean, there's actually uh, Sage Steels on ESPN. And she's, okay. Uh, yeah, All right. So, so. Sage. I never really thought of it as a food name, but yes. You never know. These millennials and what they like to name their babies. All right. right. You'll have these embarrassing moments at church with children, so it's just like what happened to this. Except uh, do you, not always with the Pope. <laughs> so this is a little boy from Argentina, and he walked up onto the altar, and he's pulling on the Swiss guard's sleeve. He wants to know if that guard's real. Yeah, and um, apparently the Pope actually made a little bit of light of the issue and let him stay up there because, oh, Mom is trying to, like, get him to come up. No, no, the come stage. on down. You really, The Pope is here. You need to go back Mom to your seat. Mom is probably seat. sweating, and, you know, we've all been there. Maybe not with the Pope, but in similar situations. So, okay, so and the, little, the little boy, I guess, is mute, so he doesn't hear or speak, and the um, Pope said, you know, let him play. He just expresses himself another way, but I just, could you imagine? No. Come Mortifying. On. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last night in Boston, it was the annual lighting of the tree at Faneuil Hall. Let's take a look and see how beautiful it was. Five, four, three, two, one. Light it up. Beautiful. Oh, it's one of the biggest trees in New England, and lots of people in the Boston area came out to see the beautiful lighting. I love it. It's so pretty.